Hey everyone, welcome back to the Dabblers Den. It's Chris Cottrell, uh, and I am in the process of updating some of my uh, presentations, some of my videos. Uh, I know it's been a while. Um, I, I, I've changed my mind about a few things. Uh, probably the most important one is the dating of the Carolina Bays. I no longer think that these are part of a younger Dryas impact story, um, but I am pushing it back uh, into the mid Pleistocene. Uh, at least beyond 400,000 years, based on the Paleoatlantic shorelines, uh, the Greenland and the Antarctica uh, ice core data. Uh, and this is something that I, I differ now from Antonio Zamora. Uh, you know, I, 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 I still really do think that he's onto something when it comes to the, to the actual formation mechanisms for the Carolina Bays. Uh, but based on this new information, which, which I presented quite a while ago, and I have not seen anything yet that has... Uh, changed my mind. Uh, there has not been any better evidence presented that that would push that date to a younger driest time frame. And so, um, so yeah, I do have to remove myself from that, and I need to to focus on on the actual timing of this event. And and we'll get into that more as we get on with it. Now, one thing that I really do like about Antonio Zamora and and his formation uh, mechanisms is he he goes by the by the uh, scientific method. You know, he, he forms a hypothesis, he goes out there, he tests those hypotheses. Uh, you know, in this case, he's actually firing ice into a, a medium that, that's very similar to what we find on the coastal plain. Uh, and he's getting these elliptical shapes. You know, this is a much better demonstration than, than the Aeolian, Lacustrian uh, examples of, of Kal Kalzaworski and, and uh, Christopher Moore. Uh, and so, so, you know, again, I... I when it comes down to the actual formation, I, I'm still with Antonio on this. Uh, and again, here's just an example of, of one of the experiments that he has, has demonstrated and, and used and, um, and has formed his conclusions by. So you can see, I mean, right there that, uh, you know, it, it does form that elliptical shape. The ice forms a penetration funnel in there. Uh, and and you're, you're left with these raised rims, just like we see with the uh, Carolina Bays. As I was putting together my, my newest presentation, um, I included this picture right here. Now, this picture I've used for years. I've had... I've, I'm pretty sure that this was filmed in, or the picture was taken in 2017. Uh, and it's been part of my presentation a few times in the past. Uh, and as I was putting together this presentation, uh, I wanted to dig a little bit deeper and try to find out more information about this picture right here, because it does show uh, a, a huge chunk of ice. I think I'm pretty sure that they determined that this fell off of an airplane uh, and pretty much fell at terminal velocity down and crashed into somebody's backyard and it formed an ellipse. You know, you see raised rims. It's everything that we see with the Carolina Bays, you see in that picture right there. This is exactly what we're talking about. And what I found was a video uh, right after this event happened, and I wanna play that for you right now. Hi, I'm Eleanor, and I was working at my friend's house in Busby today, um, and about five to 11 heard a massive boom, like an explosion, and then the house shook. Uh, got a bit of a fright and went down to investigate to make sure um, everything was alright. I thought maybe something had fallen off the roof at first. Um, and I looked out some windows, couldn't see anything and then came to the back of the house and saw this almighty hole in the ground with white. Um, didn't know what it was at first because it didn't come outside. I phoned my friend Lindsay whose house it was to ask was this there before. She left for work this morning but no. Um, so then did come outside to make, to see and saw that it was obviously ice. Um, I mean, it was massive. Had it fallen on the house or in a car or if anybody was in the garden, they would not have survived this. Um, it's all very bizarre. And yep, no idea what it was, where it's come from. So, I mean, as I, as I said, you know, this is exactly what we're talking about. You know, huge chunks of ice falling out of the sky, crashing to the ground. You know, she explains there being a large boom, an explosion, and then going outside and finding this elliptical shaped depression in the ground full of ice, raised rims, everything that we're talking about with the Carolina Bays. This is real life. This really happened. Uh, now you scale that up to baseball stadium sized chunks of ice and you get the Carolina Bays. So, so again, if we're, if we're following the scientific method, we're trying to find a, an answer to our, uh, or a solution to our problem, 
then then this is a great start right here. You know, trying to blow wind with fans and things like that. You know, this is that's not getting us the same thing. Uh, but this right here is real life. It really happened. Uh, here's just some of image some of the images from from that story. Uh, here's another angle of it. Again, you can see that elliptical shape. You can see the raised rims. You can see all the ice that's scattered around all around it. Uh, here we have the, uh, this is the actual owners of the property, uh, and to scale, I mean, we're looking at like a five or six foot hole here and, and, uh, you know, full of ice and, and these raised rims all the way around it. Exactly what we're talking about. Uh, and, and again, this is the last image here again. Perfect. I mean, this is, this is, these, these are our miniature Carolina bays. Uh, we could test this. We can, we have tested this and Tony Zamora has tested it on, on a small scale, uh, this chunk of ice fell off of an airplane. This is something that we could test. Uh, you know, these, you scale this up and, and you've got Car Carolina Bay forming, uh, chunks of ice. Uh, so again, I may disagree with Antonio on the formation, uh, date of these Carolina Bays, but, uh, you know, when you have all of these lines of evidence, you know, when you have all of these Carolina bays all over the East Coast, you've got the Nebraska rainwater basins, uh, you adjust the Coriolis effect, uh, thanks to Michael Davius, you know, you plot all of these uh, Carolina bays, you, you align them all using the LIDAR, they all point back to that Michigan area, that Saginaw Bay area. You look at the bedrock on the ground and, uh, you know, it, it forms these perfectly concentric rings. You know, this is, this is... <laughs> This is what happened here. Uh, and uh, again, I, we're, we're not looking at wind and water here. This is the, these are huge chunks of ice coming out of the, the Laurentide ice sheet, falling back down onto the East Coast and forming these uh, these Carolina bays, you know, going towards the, the Midwest and forming these Nebraska rainwater basins. We're finding them in Kansas now. We're finding them in Texas. Uh, and so, again, this this definitely needs to be reevaluated. And um, uh, this is just another line of evidence uh, in that direction. Uh, so anyways, guys, I'm going to wrap this one up there. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, stay, stay on the lookout. I, I've got lots of uh, videos on, on the way. This presentation I'm putting together right now is going to be uh, presented in different parts. Uh, and we're all gearing up for the uh, Cosmic Summit 2023. Uh, so hopefully you guys are all ready for that. Uh, if you haven't already, uh, the, there are still some tickets available. I expect them to sell out really quick. Um, you can also get the, the online live stream version of that, uh, head over to howto.com and check that out. And uh, anyways, guys, thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.